and welcome to Eco Talk, the show where we meet the people working hard to conserve biodiversity. Now, in a previous episode, we introduced the concept of citizen science, where members of the public go out, volunteer to collect scientific data. Today, we're joined by Christine Tanzi, who's founded her own citizen science project. Christine, thank you for joining us. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Excellent. Now, I'm really eager to learn more about Tracker Tree, your citizen science project. But first, would you mind telling us a little bit about yourself and maybe what brought you into the world of citizen science? Yeah, sure. Um, I am actually doing a PhD based up at the University of Edinburgh. But before I started my research, I had taken part in several citizen science initiatives myself, as well as volunteering for some nature conservation projects. And so I'd started to get really interested in how information collected by volunteers can be used to answer scientific questions. So when I started my own research, I wanted to find a way to get more people thinking about questions of ecology, and that's how Tracker Tree came about. Oh, brilliant, thank you. Now, for our viewers who might not be familiar with the project, could you explain a little bit what Tracker Tree is all about? Yes, certainly. Tracker Tree is not only a citizen science project, but a citizen ecology project. And we ask volunteers to go out and record the progress of spring in UK woodlands. So we're particularly interested in the relationship between woodland trees and the flowering plants that grow beneath them during spring when they're in competition for light. And what we ask our volunteers to do is to go out in the early spring and select a tree or trees if they want to monitor more than one and uh, collect some information about that tree and the wood that it's in. They'll then start to visit it on a weekly basis throughout the spring and monitor when it comes into bud burst and when it comes into leaf, as well as counting some of the flowering plants that we include in the project. Excellent. Now, I've noticed you've brought along some shiny new resources with you. I have indeed, <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, so the way that we run Tracker Tree is through our website, which is www.trackertree.org.uk. And our volunteers need to register as a recorder. And then once they're on our website, they can download our materials. So they include our field guide, which is the full instructions for taking part in the project, including the species that we um, uh, include that can be monitored. We also produce a field workbook, which has a few extra identification tips and uh, recording forms. So. Our volunteers need to do two things to take part in Tracker Tree. Uh, the first thing they do is visit the woods and select their tree. We record that information on the uh, this recording form. And after that, they start to visit the same tree on a weekly basis and they record the tree and flowering plant phenology using this form. Ah, brilliant. So everything they need on the website. It should be. Excellent. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> Thank you. So Tracker Tree aims to study phenology but in a nutshell, what is phenology and why is it such a good subject to research? Well, phenology is the study of seasonal biological events. So that's things like leafing and flowering in plants or spawning in frogs or nesting in birds, for example. And phenology looks at these things in relation to climate conditions. It's a really useful thing to record because different species respond to climate conditions like temperature in a different way. So by monitoring spring phenology, for example, we can start to see how some species are responding to changes in climate. It's also really important for different levels of the food chain. So a good example of this is that caterpillars need to come out at the point when there are enough leaves for them to eat to survive. And birds like blue tits or great tits need to ensure that their eggs hatch when there are enough caterpillars to feed the chicks on. So by monitoring the timings of spring, we can start to see whether these are going to change and whether that will affect the survival of different species in the future. Now, there are a lot of citizen science projects out there already. When you came up with Tracker Tree, did you coordinate with any existing ones, maybe to pull your resources or just to ensure you didn't overlap with what someone else was doing? Yes, we did. And in fact, Tracker Tree grew out of my relationship with the Woodland Trust who are the charity that support my PhD research. And they run a project called Nature's Calendar, which is another big uh, citizen science phenology recording scheme. 
and they record a range of observations in the spring and in the autumn. But we developed Trackatory to specifically ask, um, answer questions that nature's calendar cannot. So you've been running Trackatory since 2014, is it? That's right. Um, our website was launched in 2014, although we ran a small pilot project in 2013 with a small group of volunteers. Ah, right. So is it too early to share any provisional findings or have you got some some few stories to tell? We do have um, some preliminary results from last year. Uh, and with Trackatory, we're f- aiming to answer two questions. Firstly, is the order of spring the same in woodlands across the UK? And our early indications suggest that species like wood anemone are quite good at tracking the leafing of oak, for example, so that they ensure they come into flower before oak trees produce their leaves and the canopy is suddenly shades the woodland floor. However, as more and more results come in, we'll start to be able to look at the relationships between more different species and in more locations around the UK. The other thing we're interested in is how much individual trees are able to vary their spring timing from year to year. And so we're really excited about 2015 because it's the first time we're going to be able to compare records over two years for a, a wide variety of trees. Oh, brilliant. So you start to get a picture of what's happening. Yeah, exactly. Ah, nice. How long would you want track a tree to run for forever. Well, <laughs> <laughs> um, to be useful, long-term monitoring of phenology is really important and we would love to see track a tree continue over the next decades. So that's my initial aim. Excellent. <laughs> Marvellous. Hopefully it will do. Yeah. <laughs> now, um, citizen science, does it have any other benefits other than just sort of the data you collected? Well, apart from contributing to answering scientific questions, it's also a really great way of learning new things about ecology yourself, learning new skills and being part of a wider community. So I myself really enjoy the process of recording and I've started to look at my local woodland in a different way even since I started recording. It can also be a really useful tool for education and help turn everybody into a citizen ecologist. Yeah. Brilliant. That's what we want. (laughs) So um, here at EcoSapien, we're all about highlighting the importance of biodiversity in our everyday lives. Well, that's the plan. (laughs) We'll let you know how that goes. (laughs) But um, I was wondering if you could share, say, uh, a personal reason why you think biodiversity is so important. Well, I think biodiversity is another way of thinking about life on Earth. And so many species are dependent on one another that that makes it incredibly important to conserve biodiversity so that we don't destroy too many of these relationships between different species. Unfortunately, that's all we've got time for. But very quickly, Christine, where can we find out again about Track a Tree? So all the information is on our website and that's www.trackatree.org.uk. So be sure to check out that website and also visit the EcoSapien homepage We've got loads of citizen science projects listed there, links on screen and in the YouTube description box. So wherever you are, whatever the weather's doing, there should be a project that's perfect for you. But remember, have fun doing it. That's the most important thing. So until next time, goodbye.